Yeah, it's so interesting. So why would someone hold to the doctrine of divine simplicity then? Because it seems like if you've never really thought of these issues, it seems kind of like just crazy to wrap your mind around you. But like what's appealing about divine simplicity that's dominated like even like church tradition for a very long time? Mm -hmm. So I think today there are three broad reasons that I've been able to identify. The first one is just like an appeal to tradition. The second is to say that simplicity kind of like safeguards some some doctrines, like maybe like the Trinity or something. And then the third reason is typically um, that simplicity is entailed by something like aseity. So when I look at a lot of different church, like uh, Christian theologians today, I think the biggest reason though is is something like the tradition. So like a bunch of dead guys affirmed it, so we have to affirm it for for whatever reason. And a lot of discussions that I see, they don't typically give the in depth analysis of why all these people in the traditions uh, affirmed it. You'll find that you will find that, but I think far too many discussions just kind of just skip over that and they just say because it's traditional. And then a lot of like the rhetoric that I see in certain theological circles today that's kind of developed around the doctrine of divine simplicity, like it's really over the top, like fear mongering kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. the way certain theologians talk is like, I mean, it's like if you deny the doctrine, you're an atheist or something, or they'll say like, there's something like really dangerous about denying this obscure medieval doctrine that most people have never heard of. And then the way sometimes evangelicals will talk about it today, it's like you're kicking the baby Jesus if you deny the doctrine or like, um, you know, if you deny it, you're automatically denying like the entirety of Christian belief. You're like an idolater, you're a Zeus worshiper or something like that. And so I see a lot of this rhetoric. And like, I mean, I guess to some extent I get it because like when I look at um, the American political context over the last like 20 years or so, I mean, we're used to hearing lots of like really over the top kind of rhetoric and a lot of alarmism. So it's only natural that like theologians would kind of start to mimic that. And I think we're also living in an era where you have to make really extreme claims in order to just get anybody's attention. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, for me, I think if we're being intellectually honest here, though, when we talk about the do doctrine of divine simplicity, I mean, we are talking about a doctrine that has zero biblical warrant. And, and not only that, but I think the explicit teachings of scripture directly contradict a doctrine. But like, we'll get into that in a minute. But I guess I'll, I'll say this in closing for the kind of final thought. When you do push through a lot of the rhetoric, if you can really like push a lot of that aside and really look at what the arguments are, it typically is something like, well, we need it to safeguard um, the mm -hmm. Trinity or to safeguard the claim that God is somehow like the creator. Only a simple God could create the universe, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the kind of like arguments that are controversial, but at least worth considering. But what I typically see, though, is this really trumped up rhetoric. Mm. It's interesting because I was reading a book um, by Kevin DeYoung, who's like a reformed pastor in, I believe, Michigan. Um, he's talking about, mm -hmm. like, what does the Bible say about homosexuality? And he brings up um, this doctrine of divine simplicity in the book, uh, kind of like almost like we need to like hold on to like traditional Christian values. And he brings this up for just like, just a little blurb. And I was kind of surprised. Um, but it seems it, it, like it makes sense now when I think about um, what you're talking here. It's like why someone would hold to the doctrine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So the next, yeah, feel free to add on. I, I just, I just find this odd, like the places where it pops up, but um, yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't surprise me that it's just like, well, we have to hold this because it's somehow connected to all these other things about like the current sexual ethics of this culture. And I'm like, 